What's going on, everybody? As promised, I wanted to share with you a cut-down version of episode one of pre-production on Shelby Oaks. The extended version of this is available for backers only, but I wanted to give you guys a taste of what you can experience on the backer-only Discord. We're off and running on Shelby Oaks, and it's extremely exciting, and I can't tell you how much I've learned already in the first few weeks, but this episode is about week one of pre-production. So I hope you guys enjoy this preview of what you can experience. So please do check out shelbyoaksmovie.com if you'd like to learn more about how you can continue to support this movie. Thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoy it. There's sort of um, a perception for YouTubers who turn into filmmakers that they should stay in their own lane and just kind of do their thing and don't try to rock the boat and just keep making YouTube videos. And there's definitely a sense of wanting to prove that I'm capable of doing that and managing a production and working with great people and not having a nervous breakdown while doing it. She starts down here and comes through. It comes underneath this overpass and then you tilt. I'm Aaron Bukunz, I'm a producer of Shelby Oaks. When I first met Chris, there was just an, he had a fundamental understanding of movies that when I'm talking to other filmmakers, like I just wish more people had. And we could talk about the same movies that we loved and sequences that we loved and like why those things worked. He clearly, he's hungry for it. He clearly knows cinema. He's got great taste. I think he could, we could do something here. I kind of pitched it as a movie about obsession, but it's also strangely like an underdog movie in a way because it's about someone who is, is kind of out on a limb. Nobody really believes them anymore. It all happened here, inside of these walls. The film is about a woman named Mia who's been searching for her sister Riley for over a decade now. And we watch her uncover a past that is increasingly darker and more sinister until eventually learning some truths about her sister's disappearance that are very disturbing for her and have roots all the way back to their childhood. And when, when her breath hits the beam, mm -hmm. it would be like a very natural, like, oh, that's why we can see her breath. I tried to write a film that's difficult to pitch and difficult to describe and is a bit of a hybrid movie between different filmmaking styles, which it in fact was very difficult to pitch. <laughs> and uh, most people had no idea what it was early on. Like we had to like explain and explain and explain. And so that'll probably be a little bit of an uphill battle going forward of just making a film that doesn't feel as if it is like every horror movie that exists. And we wanted to try to genre it a little bit and put some scary shit in there too, to make it fun and not just about sad stuff. <laughs> <laughs> He had this story that him and his wife, Sam, had on, you know, based off his series of Halloween videos that he had done. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. Like, that's really cool. And I think, you know, the found footage aspects of that make it very achievable and producible. So that was exciting. And then we started to kind of, you know, uh, marry that with some other bigger ideas that we had. And it became what it is today that we're shooting in two weeks, which is crazy. So far, it's been pretty exciting. We're in pre-production still. There's things being thrown at you constantly every day. It's like a 12, 13, 14 hour day. And you just have to kind of have answers for everything and keep a level head. This is actually a historical property. And we are exploring this to see if it will suit our hero location for the Brennan house where Mia and Robert live. When you look at a, a location, it's not just, does this look good on film? It's logistically, can we make this work? So there's all these factors have to come in and then it just checked every single box immediately. Then we jumped to the prison, we went to the Shawshank prison. I was telling him like every room is overwhelming because there's so many possibilities. There's this abandoned amusement park that we love. Those are like big puzzle piece locations that we had to have and those all kind of fell into place nicely. We're really looking at accessibility for condors, trucks, where we can get as far as access points to get everything in here. We need to light the scene. And then, yeah, just looking at how the scenes are going to play out in the space on their own and uh, what we can do to make the best, most prettiest thing. This film has been helped in such a big way by fans and by Kickstarter. I just feel a responsibility 
to deliver for them. Yeah. yeah. So like in the script, it was a hallway and they right. would cut When off. we were talking about things we wanted to do, the sets we wanted to build, locations, actors, things like that, it just seemed like it was kind of an impossibility with the amount of money we had. At this point, we're two weeks out from production and basically it's just making sure that everybody's on the same page. This is what we're trying to achieve. This is what we need to do. This is the amount of time we have to do it in and let's not make it shitty. <laughs>